guys welcome back to the channel it's actually been a couple of months i think since i posted a video last so um had this car the gt4 i think you've seen a couple episodes of this a little bit already haven't really done too much with it yet um i did add the apple carplay that's been working out great you guys have seen the video on that and um i did add these wing extensions so Kind of made it a little more aggressive looking, but today is actually going to be the ultimate modification you could do to these. That's right. We have some Catless headers. Um, these are from Top Gear Performance in the UK. Uh, a lot of people like these headers because they're a little bit more of a budget option compared to some of the other options out there for the 981 Caymans and GT4s. Um, they fit both cars, both the, I think it's like the 3.2 liter versus 3.8 versus 4 liter. They're all the same headers for all these cars. Yeah, so these are about 1200 bucks shipped. And the next uh, option is, I think, the sole headers. And those are like around four grand for a set of headers. And then it just goes up from there, like six grand, eight grand, 10 grand for a set of headers which I think personally is a little bit silly. It's literally metal, so I don't know. There is the Porsche tax, which I'm not really used to, but uh, figured save a little bit of money. Um, the main thing with these headers, and if Top Gear, you're watching this, um, this little O2 sensor, little pipe that goes inside is extremely restrictive. I don't know what they were thinking. It takes up like, I don't know, a quarter, half of the flow. So we're gonna be cutting these out and it actually has these mini cats inside of it. So you won't throw um, O2 sensor codes. So we're gonna cut those guys out. I have a hole saw and uh, you can see this little pilot hole right here. Hole saw should be able to cut the diameter of that and cut this whole pipe out. And then I have some actual um, J shape O2 extenders. And then I might actually weld the mini cat onto the end of that and then the O2 sensor to make this an external system versus internal. And the whole point of headers is to add performance. These cars actually have quite a bit of a torque dip around 3000 RPM and apparently going catless uh, solves that issue. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna see how these babies do and definitely gonna have some sound clips at the end because these are gonna sound absolutely glorious. I mean, these are a little bit cheaper headers, uh, but the one thing I was kind of bummed about even paying $1,200 for headers, I mean, it's still pricey, is you would expect these flanges to be perfectly flat. And if they're not, you're gonna get sealing issues against the cylinder heads. I put a straight edge on these guys. They're a little bit warped kind of in the corners and it just makes me think they kind of ran this through like one of those bigger like table belt sanders to kind of flatten it out and kind of caught the edge of it. And then the other one is a little bit warped kind of in the middle and I think is due to like heat from welding and such. But we're gonna try to fix that with a little tool I have. So this guy right here is called a machinist stone. And a lot of these are mainly used to sharpen knives and sharpen tools and such. But they are perfectly flat. They are machine surface. And I actually have a bigger one of these on order. You can get these on Amazon for like 20 bucks or less. But I ordered a giant like 12 inch one to uh to make sure that you know it covers the entire surface that way i'm not you know creating a low spot and half the header versus the other side um you can use these for pretty much any flange or mating surface so like including this one um and it's basically like a 120 grit ish sandpaper and you can see that each side has two different grits so Kind of nice tool to have. I've used use them a lot for like water pump mating surfaces and stuff where there's like water, you know, transfer on the motor and stuff. So yeah. All right, so got this one inch hole saw with the guiding arbor bit. And I think that's actually going to work that size. So um, that little hole they had drilled in there will kind of guide it. And then it'll cut that whole thing out, hopefully pretty clean. If not, um, I can go ahead and grind it on the inside. Do you see that? 
My Milwaukee drill is literally smoking. Never seen that happen before. So that actually wasn't too bad trying to take that out. So here's what the mini cat looks like. So there you go. Cat on the other side. And that just connected to the O2 sensor in there. So just gonna uh, grind this down just a little bit more to make it perfectly smooth. But uh, yeah, just gotta do that to the other side now. And then what I did was I got a bunch of like different hole saw sizes and just kept working my way up. Started with the smaller pilot one and then just kept drilling bigger and bigger holes to uh, cut all the way around the pipe. And it worked. All right, shout out to Chris Sadowski. We got these uh, J-shaped O2 sensor spacers with a mini cat welded in the middle of it. So I can screw this guy in to the rear O2 sensor where the cat would be. And you have a mini cat going to the rear O2, so I shouldn't throw any codes. I think it angled, it's angled more this way. Um, so. Yeah, looking pretty good. And then I did, you know, obviously remove the mini cats from inside. So these are inside of there, like I showed before. I did use my deburring tool here and kind of did inside of these flanges a little bit to make them per perfectly smooth. And uh, it looks pretty good. And I did the whole inside of those. So I think we're ready to actually put these on now. This is the machinist stone I was talking about. I just got it from Amazon, it was like 30 bucks, but um, this is the biggest one I found, it was a 12 inch. So I started uh, flat sanding this and you can kind of see where all the low spots are. I marked them with a Sharpie, just so I know when it's actually flat. But uh, yeah, this warpage will cause a header leak so definitely wanted to get that taken care of and flattened again. I suppose I could have taken this to a machine shop, but uh, I don't know, would have probably been over hundred bucks to get both manifolds decked and just saved a little bit of money. So probably gonna do the same thing with this flange, just to make sure that doesn't leak either. But um, basically once all these pen marks are gone, that I'll know it's flat. Okay, we got the O2 sensors unplugged on the passenger side, front rear. And then the main reason I wanted to do this actually was I was gonna take apart the exhaust anyways. You can kind of see on the top there, those gaskets were leaking a little bit. So I needed to take apart this whole exhaust system anyways. Um, the driver's side is actually even worse. You can hear like a little bit of a exhaust leak or a tick while you're driving. So I got all new OEM gaskets. Um, I'm gonna leave the actual O2 sensors in there and just drop the entire assembly and then just leave it unplugged. I think that's gonna be the easiest way. Um, there's a little bit of corrosion on where it connects to the engine. Hopefully that's not too big of a deal, but I do have all new hardware to go with it. Okay, hey, here's a little side-by-side. -side. So next thing we're gonna do is transfer our O2 sensors over to this side. And again, we're gonna put our mini cat, something like that in between. And uh, you can kind of see that uh, even the stock manifold, see that uh, those little burn marks? Those were definitely leaking a little bit past these gaskets as well. And <clears throat> this guy, that was completely blown out. You can see that was leaking for a while. So that went all the way through. So yeah, 
Definitely need to do exhaust gaskets. All right, uh, things were going pretty well for the most part. Got both the headers installed. Uh, one side I did have an issue with, so I was torquing everything back down. Uh, it only goes to like 22 foot pounds, nothing crazy. And of course the threads strip out in the cylinder head. So now I had to get a uh, helicoil set and I'm gonna install helicoil and hopefully that fixes it. Uh, I'm actually going to probably red Loctite this thread in place just to make sure it doesn't slip or anything weird like that, but that should be a permanent fix. Um, I know there are like time certs which are a little bit better than those, but that would require me taking the header off again, and then I risk damaging another thread. So I really don't want to go through that. The cylinder heads on these are very, very soft aluminum. I don't know if they do it to make machining easier or what, or porting, um, but yeah, it's uh, if you're gonna be doing this job, just be super careful with how you're threading this stuff in. fixing that that one thread that was damaged with the helicoil luckily that worked out and we got it torqued down properly and uh I'm just going for a drive right now um had to make sure like all the o2 sensor wires were all tucked in place but so the valves are closed right now and just want to get kind of a feel for what it sounds like it's really quiet actually with the valves closed so i was kind of surprised by that um, so we're gonna get to the end of this street and uh, open her up and see what she sounds like. So, yes. All right, so just open the valves up. You can kind of hear it already, yeah. All right, so see how it does. We're gonna roll her. Yeah, I don't think those uh, driving clips really did it justice. Hopefully they did, but uh, in person it sounds absolutely insane. It's uh, marginally louder, I would say, with the stock cat back, but with like a more higher pitched tone that sounds more in line with the GT car. If it weren't for uh, that one thread stripping out, it would have been a fairly easy job. And then those O2 sensor extenders uh, did get in the way of a couple things. We had to finagle with that. But um, yeah, shout out to Tristan. 
He also has a uh, boxer version of my car that uh, is pretty nice. And um, yeah, he's had his car for a long time, drives it everywhere, so he gave me a bunch of tips with this car and uh, where to get parts if I need to. And uh, yeah, so if you guys have any question or comments of anything else you want done with this car, although it is extremely expensive to do anything with it, let me know in the comments. The next video is actually gonna be in depth with the S2000 and I have a whole bunch of suspension overhaul and upgrades that are gonna be doing with this. So that episode is probably gonna be next week, I would say, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.